to uh, this video. I'm just going to show you just a quick rundown of how I got, or just using Octoprint. I'm not going to show you how I installed it. Um, I just followed the directions on their site how to do that. Um, but Octoprint can be used on printers that are MakerBot clones. Um, when it first came out, you couldn't do that. So I have one idled here. I got a CTC clone of a MakerBot Duel. Uh, right back there is the Raspberry Pi. This one has a time lapse camera on it. And the other USB cord plugs in the back of the printer. So I don't have to use my main printer as a like a server, printer server. It loads from my computer through the network to the Raspberry Pi and then that runs the code, the G code, into the printer. Um, you use G codes, but there's a plug-in on the software that converts it to the to the program that um, or the, the extension that you need to use that uh, X3G. So um, second printer is making a uh, uh, Raspberry Pi case um, for a project of mine and that on the side here you can see a little bit better the Raspberry Pi is running on a network. This one does not have a uh, time-lapse camera on it. I just ordered it on eBay and it should be coming this week. I printed off a little case for it. It runs off of a 5 volt power supply so it doesn't use a lot of energy and uh, it's uh, a nice little print server. started out with one and I had to get the second one on there. You can see I'm not using the SD card so I don't have to mess with the buttons unless I want to cancel it on here or change anything on here. I can change the temps here and I can also change it on the program. I actually changed my heat bed up from 110 to 120 on the program. On this printer I also added a little uh, voltage regulator so I can have the uh, filament fan uh, actually cool when I use PLA and Octoprint controls that too. It turns it on just like a, a MakerBot replicator. Let's go back over to the computer here and I'll show you just the plug-in that you need to get and it's all on the software and it's just Octoprint. It's the converter for making it like a flash forward or older replicator, uh, MakerBot replicator, uh, the X, 2X, all the way on down. So on my screen here I have my, actually on my TV right now I have the two screens up to show you side by side. Uh, one has the camera on and I have it set on control so you actually can control everything with that. And in the far left over here, right in here, is where you upload your files. So I'll be doing that in a little bit. This other one is the second printer and it is showing the temps and you can see it's printing and it has quite a bit of time left. Uh, it's still calculating the time. I think it's a three hour print. Uh, eventually it will show how much time is left when it gets about halfway. And here are the controls if I want to turn the temperatures up. You just type it in and hit set. Okay, so I'm going to start this other printer up and show you how I use my Simplify um, slicer, Simplify 3D, and I'll hit the upload button and upload the G code to this and it'll start printing. Go back to the computer here. Uh, I'll get my project here. I'll slice it. It's going into my ready to print folder. It says it's too long of a name. So I'm going to move this down. Try to do this all with one hand here. And this is what I named it before. 
and hit save. And I really like Simplify 3D, it slices really fast. And a three hour print, it's sliced already. Maker bot <laughs> takes a little bit of time to slice. So now I'm gonna try to do this by looking at the TV here. Sorry for the focusing there. It's tough when you have it all around. So I'm going to go down to upload. And there's my files. Ready to print. And there's my pie case. And I have it slice the MakerBot code and the three or uh, G code. I've, you can print with this it doesn't give you as much control and it doesn't calculate the print times as much and it's not it's a little glitchy uh, using the g-code I've had it print for 20 hours and not had it cause any problems so I'm going to upload it and you can see it's uploading over the network to the to the Raspberry Pi and I am doing a bunch of stuff right now with my network so it's a little slow. You can actually use a network line, a landline, and they load up a lot faster. But then again you have more wires behind your, behind your uh, printers. While, while that's loading I'm going to switch back to temperature here. It'll probably load a little faster because it was streaming the video to my yeah, there we go I'm streaming the video to my computer so you can see I did have it going a little while the temperatures have come down so 25 minutes ago it was a little bit warmer so now that I see my code loaded up here I hit the load button and it's gonna load it up in here and I can hit print so as soon as I hit print the printer will start moving And this takes a little while to warm up because I the heated bed plate is a newer plate and it actually works better than what came with my CTC. So it will warm up and it's going to print basically the same case but in black. So I hope you enjoyed just taking a look at this and I will put a couple links on where I got the information from, uh, the, pie, the cases and any tricks I can remember when I installed this but it was pretty easy just following the page and getting it set up so you can use MakerBot replicators um, and on down to uh, use OctoPrint thank you